Aesop Stories Number 51 The Frogs Who Wanted a King Once upon a time, in a quiet, green pond, there lived many frogs. They all jumped and played together. But the frogs had a problem. They did not have a king. They thought, all the other animals have leaders. We should have one too. So, the frogs decided to ask Jupiter, the king of the gods, for help. They sent the wisest frogs to speak to him. Please, Jupiter, give us a king to lead us, they asked. Jupiter looked at the little frogs. He saw that they did not understand what they were asking. So, he decided to teach them a lesson. He threw a big log into the pond. Splash! The water went everywhere. The frogs were scared. They thought the log was a monster. They hid under the water. But after a while, the frogs saw that the log did not move. It was just a piece of wood. They swam back to the top. They laughed at the log and jumped on it. This is not a good king. They said. The frogs wanted a different king. They went to Jupiter again. Please, give us a real king, they begged. This time, Jupiter sent them an eel. The eel was quiet and calm. He did not do much. The frogs were not happy again. This king is too lazy. They said. So, they asked Jupiter one more time. Please, we want a better king, they said. Jupiter was not happy with the frogs. They did not understand that a king could be a problem. So, he sent them a heron. The heron was a big bird. He was not a kind king. Every day, he ate some of the frogs. The frogs were very scared. They could not play and jump like before. Soon, there were no frogs left to ask for another king. They all learned a hard lesson. Sometimes, it is better not to have a king and they should be careful what they wish for. The pond became quiet. There were no more frogs to make noise. And Jupiter watched, hoping other animals would learn from the frog's mistake. Number 52. The Children and the Frogs. Once, on a sunny day, a group of children were playing near a big pond. The pond was calm and full of green frogs. The frogs were jumping and croaking happily. The children saw the frogs and thought it would be fun to play a game. They started throwing stones at the frogs. They laughed and shouted, not thinking about the frogs. The stones splashed in the water. Some hit the frogs. The children did not stop. They kept throwing more and more stones. But the children did not understand what they were doing. They thought it was just a game. They did not see that the frogs were getting hurt. Suddenly, one brave frog came up from the water. He was an old frog with a wise face. He looked at the children and spoke to them. Please stop, the frog said. What you think is fun is hurting us. Your game is dangerous for us. We are small, and your stones are big and heavy. They can kill us. The children stopped throwing stones. They looked at the frog. They were surprised. They had never heard a frog speak before. The old frog continued, We all share this pond. We should be kind to each other. What is fun for you can be very bad for others. The children felt sorry. They did not mean to hurt the frogs. They just did not think about it. We are sorry, 
said one child. We did not know we were hurting you. We will not throw stones anymore. The children learned a big lesson that day. They learned to think about others. They understood that their actions could hurt someone else. From that day, the children were more careful. They played other games that did not hurt the frogs. They watched the frogs jump and croak. They enjoyed the pond together, in peace. The old frog watched the children. He was happy. The pond was safe again for the frogs. And the children never forgot the wise words of the old frog. They remembered to always be kind and think about others. Number 53. The Ill Deer and His Friends. In a peaceful forest, there lived a group of deer. Among them was one deer who became very sick. He was too weak to walk or eat. He lay down in a quiet spot under a big tree. The other deer in the forest heard about their sick friend. They decided to visit him. They wanted to see if he was okay. Every day, more and more deer came. They all said they were worried about the sick deer. But these deer did not really come to help. Near the sick deer, there was a pile of fresh grass. This grass was for the sick deer to eat when he felt better. But the visiting deer did something bad. Each deer ate some of the grass. They thought, there is so much grass, he will not notice. But the sick deer did notice. Every day, he saw the pile of grass get smaller and smaller. He was still too weak to eat. But he needed the grass for when he could eat again. Days passed. The sick deer did not get any food. All the grass was gone. The other deer had eaten it all. They thought they were just taking a little. But all of them together took everything. The sick deer became weaker and weaker. He had no food to help him get better. In the end, he was so weak that he died. The other deer came again and saw that their friend was gone. They felt very sad. They remembered how they ate his food. The deer in the forest learned a hard lesson. They thought they were being good friends. But they were not helping. They were only thinking about themselves. They learned that it is important to think about others. Being a good friend means helping, not taking away what they need. After that day, the deer in the forest promised to be better. They decided to take care of each other. They did not want to lose another friend. And the forest was peaceful again. But the deer always remembered their friend who was sick. They did not forget the lesson they learned. Number 54. The Clever Donkey and the Salt Cellar. Once, in a small village by the sea, there was a man who sold salt. He had a donkey to help him carry the salt. Every day, they went to the seashore to get salt. Then, they walked back to the village to sell it. The road to the village had a stream. One day, while crossing the stream, the donkey slipped. He fell into the water with his load of salt. The donkey stood up again, but the salt in his bags had melted. The bags were now light. The donkey felt happy. The heavy load was gone. The salt seller had to go back to the seashore to get more salt. The next day, they went again to the seashore. The donkey carried bags full of salt. When they reached the stream, the donkey had an idea. He thought, if I fall again, the load will be light. So, he fell down on purpose. The salt melted, and the load was light again. The donkey was very pleased. 
he thought he was very clever. But the salt seller understood what the donkey was doing. He decided to teach the donkey a lesson. The third time, they went to the seashore. But this time, the salt seller filled the bags with sponges, not salt. The donkey did not know about the sponges. He thought he was carrying salt. When they reached the stream, the donkey fell down on purpose again. But something different happened. The sponges soaked up the water. They became heavy, much heavier than salt. The donkey tried to stand up. But now the load was very heavy. He had to carry a big, heavy load all the way to the village. The donkey understood his mistake. He realized that being clever in a tricky way was not good. He had made his work harder. From that day, the donkey did not try to trick the salt seller. He carried his load honestly. He learned that hard work was better than being tricky. And the salt seller was happy with his donkey. They worked well together, selling salt in the village. Number 55 the wise old ox and the butchers. In a large green field, there lived a herd of oxen. These oxen were strong and hard-working, but they had a big worry. In their village, there were butchers. The butcher's job was to prepare meat, and sometimes this meant they had to slaughter the oxen. One day, the oxen had a meeting. They were tired of being afraid of the butchers. They decided it was time to fight back. Let's get rid of the butchers. They said. They sharpened their horns to prepare for the battle. But there was one old ox in the herd. He was very wise and had seen many things. He spoke to the other oxen, Wait, listen to me. I have something important to say. The other oxen listened. The old ox said, the butchers do take some of us, but they know how to do it quickly and without causing much pain. If we fight them and they are gone, what will happen next? We might end up with people who don't know how to do the butcher's job. They might hurt us more and make our end much worse. The oxen thought about this. They had not considered what would happen after the butchers were gone. The old ox continued, we must think carefully. Sometimes, trying to change something bad can lead to something even worse. The oxen understood the wise words of the old ox. They realized that getting rid of the butchers might not be the best solution. They might end up with a bigger problem. The oxen decided not to fight the butchers. Instead, they chose to live their lives peacefully in the field, making the best of their situation. The old ox's advice had saved them from a dangerous mistake. The oxen learned an important lesson, it's better to think carefully before trying to change a situation. Sometimes, changing one problem might lead to a bigger one. From then on, the oxen lived together in the field, working and enjoying their days. And they always remembered the wise words of the old ox.